a lot of people tend to forget is, well, you're Nawab and all those things, in terms of lineage, you're actually an extremely self-made person. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, we can carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, but right. you know, narratives suit, I've learned this, they just, you can't argue against them, whether they're true or not, you can right. go blue. People have a certain fixed notion. Right. You know, um, because that's the, that's the part of your life that I really want to talk about okay. uh, because it's seldom spoken of in the sense that you were a 20 year old kid who showed up in Bombay yes. living on your own. I don't think you took money from your parents. No. You, you're absolutely self-made in that sense. Uh, yeah, I mean even for, for that matter Patodi, I mean when my father died it was rented to the Nimrana uh, group of hotels. Okay. So uh, Aman and Francis used to run that. Yes. And Francis yes. passed away now, poor fellow. So he said, you know, if you ever want it back, um, let me know. And I said, I, I want it back. <laughs> so they had a conference and said, okay, you have to give us lots of money, right. which I then consequently earned and kind of, so even the so house I'm supposedly inherited oh, wow. has been earned back through right. money from films. From I mean, from you movies. can't live on, on the past. Right. At least we can't in our family. I mean, because right. there, there was nothing. There's, there's some history and culture and some beautiful photographs mm. and of course some land and it's been a privileged upbringing. But um, and, uh, there's been no um, uh, like inheritance. Coming, coming from there's there. no inheritance Never coming been. from there. Never been. So when you, when you moved to Bombay, Sef, uh, you were not from the city. Uh, you uh, actually yeah. lived in a house that you rented. Is that is that how it worked? Well, I was born here and I was yes. familiar with Bombay. Then we lived in Bhopal and Patodi and Delhi. Where did you grow up in Bombay? Carmichael Road. In Carmichael Road, Road okay. yeah. Because uh, my mother, I think, was keen and and being married to my father, the different worlds, you know. So it wasn't a very film centric kind of um, upbringing. And South Bombay, anyway. And South Bombay, whatever, um, in Cathedral and Bombay Gym. That's because also my father's world and, and that influence, which I think she was quite happy to be a part of, away from um, you know, the constant pressure of being uh, in a film environment. Right. So a little break in life. Right. So I think one has inherited that. So you then, of course, were in Delhi and then that's where you moved to Bombay from. Um, Would that be correct to say after you finished? Well, my father, you know, uh, was living with my mother uh, in her, her flat okay. um, in, in Rashmi. And uh, he had just finished kind of playing cricket when I was four or five was his last test series. So he, my mother says, was bunking his responsibilities as they were in Bhopal, Patodi, because his mother was looking after things. Right. And she got a bit old. Um, we moved to Delhi to kind of live with her. Right. Um, with your grandma? With my grandmother in you know a nice big old house in delhi where um which she had been given for her lifetime um in return for land and property and all those kind of deals that these old families had made with the indian government right. 71 uh, 71 right. exactly so that's why we moved to delhi and it was great living in delhi we had a lot of fun um uh, i think that was the generation of these Designers like Rohit Bal, Rohit Khosla, you know, Ashish Soni and these people were among the first people I'd come across who were doing something off the beaten track in terms of art and culture, right. um, which might have somewhere planted a seed of, you know, why not go and act in films or try and do that because the whole force was to be a doctor you did, you or lawyer. You started with an ad anyway, right? Yeah, my father sent me to an ad agency hmm. um, to get a job and he, he thought it would be character forming because I was partying a lot. Okay. And not doing much. Where were and you partying in Delhi? In, in the Gungru, Gungru, you know, right. with everyone. Right. It was right. fantastic at yeah. a great time. Uh, and he said, you know, it's not working for me. You, so he used to send me in a bus uh, to some Sundar Nagar in Delhi. And we were working for this agency. And, this, and I think one of the jobs we had was making religious calendars for the Birlas. So the only creative thing was should we put Lord Vishnu in October <laughs> or should we? No, let's put him in November. <laughs> so I kind of lost interest with that quite soon. Um, yeah, but. And then Gwalior happened? Is that, is that what the Gwalior story is? shootings, I mean, I, my father again had a thing. Um, they were shoot, my parents were shooting this ad together and he said, they, I think they'd asked him, is your son interested? So he had this plan. He said, at 7 o'clock this evening, I want you to first have a bath comb your hair and just stick your head into the living room and come and say hello to me at mm. 7. Huh. That was his whole plan, which I did. And the producer was sitting there. Right. So I think the idea was like, oh, you know, your son and Woody, that kind of thing. Um, and I got it. But you know, honestly, I think the way my upbringing was or the kind of life I had or the lack of 
some kind of genuine confidence or something, something, something. I, I wasn't a very good um, cinematic figure, <laughs> you know, in terms of either to shoot in photographs, I think I was very effeminate and very kind of coy and shy and kind of uh, unsure, which is, you know, precisely the worst qualities you could have for a for a leading man as a yeah, as an actor right. in, in Bombay, mm. uh, but not bad for a kind of a you know Western academic schoolboy. Sure. sure, you know that there was a different culture right. altogether. So some quick learning was required. And then you moved to Bombay. Uh, I'm presuming you rent an apartment, or did you go to yes, Carmichael no, Road? No, I tried staying in Carmichael Road, right. but it was uh, awesome. really lonely and empty and okay. uh, kind of. I didn't know anybody around and I found it very difficult to run this house on my own and mm -hmm. kind of feel okay there. And my mom used to come and spend time with me and then... So where did you first move? We rented, uh, rented a place in Lokhanwala called Red Rose, one building, um, a small flat and we had cane furniture and the producer's uh, daughter very kindly did up the place for me um, until one night when I came back from uh, dinner, let's say, with friends. And um, I couldn't open the bedroom door because she had locked it and um, she had gone to sleep on the bed. I think she had a plan. And I was peeping, there was a big gap between the door and the carpet. So I was peeping under there, I could see her and she was a large lady. So it was like a, a whale on my bed. <laughs> and I thought, I'm not going in there, I'm not going in there. <laughs> so we went out again. <laughs> Why would she do that? She wanted you out. Huh? She wanted you out or she wanted you in? She was my interior designer. Right. She was doing the furniture right. and she locked the bedroom door and she went to sleep thinking I'll have to knock and I don't know what the plan was. Maybe I, I don't know what it was. She should have left it open at least, <laughs> I would have thought. I mean. <laughs> anyway. So that's, that's when you begin your career pretty much by yourself and it's from whatever I've read, it's a disastrous start. It's a disastrous start. So, is there a person who brought you here? If, uh, yeah, Anand Mahindru, who was doing television, came okay. to Delhi. That's when, so there was all this thing of school. I went to a really academic school. Um, really, like Eton and Winchester and you're supposed to go to Oxford. And, and I learned a lot of respect for, you know, this... Winchester is where you the went The academic to. world. Winchester is, is where I Is that the school that sends uh, the ball boys for Wimbledon? No. Would it be the same school? No, I don't think oh, it's so. it's not true. Okay. No, it must be okay. some other school. Right. But uh, this is like the oldest school in England. It's 1300 or something it was founded in. And it's really kind of like ancient. And, and the respect for academics and books and everything, uh, you know, it's, it's on another level. And the idea is, obviously, it's not a cheap school, that you go to Oxford or you go to, you know, wherever. Um, so that hadn't worked out. So I was in a little black books of my parents who were like, you know, this guy's and then Delhi and, you know, and partying and Gunguru and they were like, you know, and I was really actually getting scared because there was nothing I was interested in. Mm. And maybe that was the product of a privileged upbringing. But I said, I don't want to sit behind a desk and I'll, I'll, I'll genuinely, I'm not interested. I don't know what to do. And then when Anand Mahindru, after this Gowali shootings ad said, you know, a film, suddenly some bells started going off, maybe something genetic in the blood or I don't know. Um, I suddenly thought the idea is so exciting of moving to Bombay. I remember having that shower in Delhi and we had an old house with like funny water and I don't know. You know um, didn't work half the time. We had to <laughs> fiddle with it forever to get it right. They get too cold and then too hot. We're digressing, we're <laughs> yeah, digressing. Sorry, 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 <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. You said make it anecdotal. Yeah. Okay, but not to this point. Like Chipkali is on the ceiling. Yeah. Okay. And then I called PWD. Yeah, PWD yeah. As and then I said, okay, stop. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> right. Um, so where was I? I was having the Shah right. and I said, uh, I was so excited that I had a idea for a, you know, a kind of a life I could see. Coming to Bombay, struggling, getting into this rented little flat and working. And the idea of working in films at that moment just meant meeting different people and working odd hours and just collaborating on, on whatever, just something really exciting. And it's the only job that from 18, when I started considering it seriously, um, I've always been fascinated and passionate about because I had this really dangerous trait of losing interest in things after a while, which is something I think everyone worries about their kid having, right. that after a while you just lose interest. Were you not a movie buff though? Yeah, but a Western movie buff. Sure. I used to watch some Hindi films and then Amitabh Bachchan movies I, mm. I liked and 
um, I found them very over emotional when I was young also because my mother was an actor and then when I see her crying on screen it's not something I enjoyed mm -hmm. so I'd say I don't want to watch this so and Hindi films at that point in the 70s and it were overly yeah, okay. emotional there's always you know a mother crying there so, so I thought <laughs> I, I don't want to watch this <laughs> <laughs> Right, so then you, you, you move to Bombay because Anand Mahindru uh, comes up and... Yeah, offers me this film. movie yeah. and then comes to the Gungru hmm. and I tell all my friends, I said, hey guys, this is a director and I'm going to Bombay. Director, right? And he had a couple of vodkas, I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> and he okay. threw up. <laughs> <laughs> why did he throw up? I, he, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know why <laughs> he, he threw up. But he threw up. So these same guys came and said, bro, your director friend's in the bathroom. <laughs> He's not feeling so good. I was like, no. no. And then, so I should have realized we're in a bit of trouble. But we came to Bombay and Sati Shori was the producer. And then somebody told me a story about her that she had run out of money while making Farishte with Vinod Khanna. And there was this ambitious large film. These Panthers were chasing him in the shot. And then they ran out of money or something. And when he comes around the corner, there's they said, no Panthers because we need money. So she said, something she said okay get some dogs and paint them black so these panthers become so that was my no, this is apocryphal, is that? no it's well it's apparently it's there if oh. you see farishta is made it's all sure, there sure so there's a so panther is actually a dog no the, the panther becomes no the dog it starts off you know okay it becomes a dog yeah because right. the, <laughs> so this is this was that's, that's the story about your first producer yes. yes and and then you know there were other things as well where she used to pay me a uh, thousand rupees a week and I'd have to kiss her ten times on the cheek. Okay. So, <laughs> so there was that. And anyway, they had a fight. Okay. Because she the, was quite the tough. The producer. Yeah, she was also quite scary and as some industry women can be, you know. So she had a fight with the director and I got saved <laughs> because the film got shelved. Right. So that is where the disaster started. Then Raul Ravel cast me in his That's film. That's disaster too, isn't That's it? That's disaster too. He, uh, Kamal Sadhana is in the movie, so he threw out Kamal Sadhana and took me right. for no fault of Kamal's and then found that I'm much worse and then threw me out and took him. And then Kamal and I became friends because we just thought it's absurd what's happening with us. So that was that. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.